Are you ready to rock? Yeah. The one and only Mr. Abe Friendly. What's up, Generations of Kiss? It is Christine 16 here after years and years of a one hell of a hiatus. Oh man, it feels great to still be a part of this Kiss world, man. Well, it's Christine 16 here, one of the original three hosts of Generations of Kiss. Um, this episode is actually going to be able, uh, be discussing a launch I previously had with Ace Freely while he was in St. Louis for the uh, Gene Simmons vault experience. He had lunch with a few people before he left on his plane. But before that, I believe I need to explain the Generations of Kiss situation. Um, if, from all the original followers who have been following me since the beginning of my music journalism career, you all know that I started under Generations of Kiss. And it lasted for a good couple years. It was a fun run. We also had two other hosts on the show. Justice, who lived in Canada, who went by the All-Canadian Man, and Clinton, who lived in Chicago. Um, he went by Clinton the Nighttime World. Well... We, we all don't really speak. I've actually, I still keep up with Justice a little bit. I know that he is actually pursuing a music career with his girlfriend, I see, and they are consistently making music, and I have high hopes for their relationship, and I'm glad to see Justice pursuing something in music. Um, and Clinton, I, I have no idea what he's up to anymore. Uh, I have no idea. We've, we've all lost contact. I, I did. There was a little situation where... The Generations of Kiss almost was lost. Generations of Kiss almost got taken down because of Clint of the Nighttime World. He posted a few pornographic images of with girls in Kiss makeup and whatnot. And Justice was the original admin at the time, and he wanted to take the entire thing down. I actually had to pay $100 to hold Generations of Kiss to my name without him deleting anything, just to keep it up, because it was a part of my life, and I didn't want to leave it. So I remember how I was stressing. I, me and my buddy Amos, we went to the bank, and we hooked up uh, money to my ATM, and we linked it over to Canada within seconds, and I was able to save the name. Uh, left, it, left, left Generations of Kiss untouched. Um, there was a period uh, last year where I decided to take down the entire Generations of Kiss page and everything that was on it. I don't know why I did. It's pretty pretty sad that I did, actually. Actually, I do know why I did. I took it all down because I was trying to give the page to a girl I was hoping to pursue a music career in. So I decided to delete everything, which I was a fucking dumbass to do. There was so much great content on there. And you know what? This is my chance to rebuild that for you guys. Um... Yeah, I deleted everything and trying to switch the name. The, the Facebook would not let us switch the name over, and the page was left untouched for a little while. With that being said, I, I started my own little side project after Generations of Kiss. After Generations of Kiss, I decided to go a little more into metal and do things, all things hard rock and heavy metal, which is called slam dance, and that's actually what I have been up to lately. Um, we like to work a lot with local bands and do a lot of filming of bands and it's just, just anything music promotional material related pretty much. If you are a fan of all things hard rock and heavy metal, I, I think you would love Slam Dance. It covers everything from Led Zeppelin to Cannibal Corpse and everything in between. Not just one very specific style, if that makes sense. Now, with all the boring stuff out of the way and keeping up to date, let's talk about this lunch with Ace. Now, everybody who is a KISS fan and a music fan in the KISS world has has understood that this was known as like the worst Ace Freely performance. And it's kind of cool to say I was at the event. I actually recorded, uh, th I live streamed three songs on my personal Facebook page of the event. And I, I took it down immediately to avoid a headline out of it like that because I... It's Ace Freely. I don't want to bash his name or anything. And it's sad that out of like 10 people that were in the room, one of those 10 people filmed it and it was put to a negative, a neg it, was, it was given in a negative way. And it was very unfortunate. It has nothing to do with how people took it out to be. If people don't understand, it was not a concert or plan set. It was literally him hanging out with a few few local friends and family, and not really family, but a few local friends before he took off into his plane with uh, Keith Valcourt, actually. Uh, Joe O'Dell and Keith Valcourt set up the event. Uh, they told me about it. We kept it on the Hush Hush show. A lot of KISS guys wouldn't, you know, show up, and that's how, that's how it goes when KISS stuff gets announced. 
Uh, Ace was in town for the Gene Simmons vault experience. And this was the day after, before he was leaving, like I said. And yeah, he was just hanging out, taking pictures with people, signing all their shit, really. All their stuff. I mean, this was literally the coolest Ace Freely experience I think I have ever been a part. Not even coolest Ace experience, coolest kiss experience. As Ace walked into the room, you know, the chefs got him his coffee and whatever he wanted, man. Like, it was pretty cool. And then there was a time I was one on one with him in the room when he was drinking his coffee and he turns to me and says, America, it's my favorite country. And I said, oh yeah, what is it about America you love, man? It's like, I have traveled the entire world, and America is it's always my favorite place to be. And I, you know, I thought that was pretty cool. Then after that, he started talking a little bit about the blues, and then Led Zeppelin, how much he loves his Zeppelin riffs. And man, he was such a cool guy. That was such an experience, man. I really don't feel I will ever be able to experience anything like that again. Most KISS fans go to KISS conventions and stuff to get a lot of their collectibles signed. I used to be a really big KISS collector and, you know, as I was getting older, I kind of grew a little out of it and started getting into other things and just anything, all, rock, all things hard rock and heavy metal. I mean, I still got my vinyls, of course, and you know what? It's a pretty big deal when you get something signed by KISS. So, of course, all my collection, the stuff that I have left is boxed up, but hey, it's always important to show what you get signed, right? Oh man, so um, here, let's go through some of these things. So I got a 1974 Hards Goods vinyl signed. Uh, this is actually before the term heavy metal was even a term. Hard Goods is similar to the term heavy metal. Uh, this is actually one of Kiss's first appearances on a vinyl that actually isn't a Kiss record, believe it or not. That's why I love this one. I love a lot of the promotional records. Oh man. Now this one is from, let's see. Uh, it has to be at least 76. Uh, 76, 77. And I had opened this in front of Ace Freely. This has been in the package for 40 years. No one else has touched this except me and Ace Freely. So I guess only me and Ace Freely's DNA is on that. You know, this is just a Kiss Nerd thing, Kiss Collectors. But literally, this thing was in the package for 40 years and I opened it for him. Of course, this is a record sleeve, so I guess I can pull that out a little bit like that. Look how beautiful that is. All right, here's my, the last vinyl I got signed. Again, I didn't have any of my KISS stuff with me, so of course that's how it goes, but it's the second one to that. Um, we got Ace's signature up there. The uh, Casablanca second, uh, the second promo record, you can see. It's even got the KISS tickets in there. And of course, last but not least, let's get some of the main, the, the, the cool stuff, the personal stuff. All right. Got a picture with Ace Freely. Oh yeah, he drew his outer space planets, man. And Kiss fans die for that stuff, man. That is literally when you get the space art. That is so cool. And then we got this one. He wrote "Snowblind" in the corner because I was excited as hell to see him perform that song. Such a such an awesome night. And of course, just fucking around with the man Keith Valcourt. Uh, right, and flip over and use as scrap paper. Oh man. Now, that is one day, man. That was. That was literally the most unbelievable day of my life. And it lasted for a good three hours. And I really want to thank Joe O'Dell and Keith Falcourt for being able to even let me experience something like this, you know? I've, I, had, I had Ace Freely on the walls of my room from the ages of 12 to 18 always consistently in my ears and to be able to hang out with someone like that is just so surreal but hey when it happens you gotta take your opportunities in life I turned 21 in May and on the, my 21st birthday Freely's Comet's doing a photo shoot, photo shoot up in Indiana and I think that'd be a pretty cool way to spend my 21st birthday you know what I'm saying up there at the Kiss 20th, Kiss tw uh, 20th year anniversary convention up in Indianapolis. All right. Well, I think that's all we have today on Generation to Kiss. I guess this isn't really Generation to Kiss. Generation to Kiss catch up of where we're at and my Ace Freely lunch experience. Uh, do you want to see Generation to Kiss make a return? I would so be down. I have actually recently talked about um, 
my Kiss vinyls and Kiss albums with Doyle in past interviews. Uh, I can make it a segment of my Slam Dance interviews. If you guys think that'd be cool. Uh, if you guys love all things hard rock and heavy metal, be sure to check out Slam Dance. You can find it on the Instagram, Twitter, uh, you know, even the Facebook, everywhere. Be sure to check out my YouTube channel, Christine16. You guys can check out the uh, my past YouTube interviews as well as live performances of various, various bands. So for the second part of this video, I am about to show you all the photos I took from the event as well as live footage. Again, Ace was only hanging out. This was not a live performance, so please don't bash and say it was terrible. That was just upsetting to see because that's not what it was. But for diehard KISS fans, here's what hanging out with Ace looks like as well as some photos. That's it guys, that's all from me, Christine16. Please subscribe and check out for more. I didn't know what you want to tune to, if you want to go to E-flat or D or what you're wanting. Well, I normally play an E-flat. Okay. Are you ready to rock? <laughs> yeah. yeah! The one and only Mr. Abe Friendly. <laughs> lives up to my expectations. <laughs> what do I love about this guitar? It's simple. You know, all my guitars, you've seen my guitars on stage, it has like three pickups and all these bells and whistles. I don't even have the other pickups connected. I just have the one pickup connected. You know? And this doesn't have a toggle switch, but that's okay. I need a little more level and a little less distortion. Like 10 or 15% louder and about 10% backed off on the distortion. Is I, the air conditioning on? I don't know. Are you hot? Would you like me to turn it up? Are you hot or I'm cold? I'm not hot. But okay. what happens is if the AC is on, it knocks the guitars out of tune. Oh. Because this is metal. And metal affects heat. I don't think it's... I don't think it's... No, it's not. No, it's not. Because when I'm recording in my studio, I turn off all the air conditioning. I put up with the heat. You know what I'm doing now? I'm giving everybody a good lesson. I'm stretching the strings to get out all the extra play in them. So when I turn it up, it stays in better tune. This is my new instructional video. What's the name of What's the name of it? 40 years later. 40 years later. <laughs>